It's now been more than 48 hours since those attacks, and there are more questions today than there are answers. Chief among them, how many people took part in the attacks? How many are at large? And just how deep is the connection between what happened here Tuesday morning and the Paris attacks that left 130 people dead last fall? NBC News has learned the two brothers who took part in Tuesday's attacks also aided the Paris gunman. A U.S. counterterrorism official telling NBC News one of the Bakrawi brothers rented a Belgian safe house for the Paris gunman last fall. Another helped to secure weapons and ammunition that were used in the massacre. Both of those men died on Tuesday. Ibrahim at the airport, his younger brother Khalid at the metro. What about the others, though? Of the three men in this now very well-known surveillance image from the Brussels airport, the man in the center has been identified as Ibrahim el Bakrawi, the older of those two brothers. He, of course, died at the airport. The man on the left has now been identified as Najim Lashrawi, uh, an ISIS commander believed to have built the suicide bombs used in Paris. He also died during the attack at the airport. The man on the right, though, is the subject of a massive manhunt. As of now, he remains officially unidentified. And while all of this is going on, the lawyer for Salah Abdeslam, the Paris suspect arrested in Belgium late last week, appeared in court today. The next hearing for him has now been pushed back to April 7th. Abdeslam could be the key that connects these various attacks as the one suspect who survived the Paris massacre. He's been linked now to an apartment rented by the Metro Brussels Metro bomber. U.S. law enforcement sources tell NBC News authorities now believe if Abdeslam had not been captured last week, he would have been part of the bombings here in Brussels as well. We are covering all the angles on this for you this morning. Keir Simmons and Eamon Mahadine have the latest on the investigation and the possible terror ties. Kelly O'Donnell is focused on the victims and the impact these bombings have had on this country. We begin this morning with Keir Simmons, who has the latest for us. Keir, good morning. Hey, Erica, good morning. And as you can see behind me, the uh, flowers and candles that uh, people who were caught up in this bombing just continue to grow. There is a, a, a sense of, of mourning here. A, a silence has descended uh, over this area. There was uh, quite a lot of uh, noise and, uh, and raucousness last night. That's certainly not the case now. It is very respectful. Meanwhile, we are hearing uh, that Salah Abdeslam, is, uh, you mentioned, is now saying that he would like to return to, to go back to France. Of course, the last time he was there, he's accused of being involved in the Paris bombings. He, he was he would like to go back to France uh, to uh, face a court there. His lawyer is saying that since the attacks here, he has stopped talking to the police, but that he wants to go to France uh, to explain himself, if you like. And a European news organization is reporting that one of the uh, senior police leaders in Europe is saying that uh, they now believe that the ISIS networks in Europe are greater than they had estimated, talking about uh, around 5,000 Europeans being recruited to ISIS, some of them going to Syria. Uh, that, of course, the ongoing challenge for the intelligence agencies here, how to tackle uh, such a large network of people, many of whom have made it back here, who have gone through training, perhaps in Syria and are determined to carry out atrocities like this. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.